And so they began manipulating. And then they said, well, the way to really manipulate people and confuse them is war. To say that one group, whether it's a city-state or a nation or whatever, has certain things that are good or bad about it, and therefore it's, we have to fight them. And the whole concept of fighting in a physical way to a fully conscious being is totally alien. There's nothing in your mind or your heart or et cetera that would say you need to do it. That's why when people go to war, even today, soldiers, they develop concepts that lead to various mental illnesses, lead to all kinds of physical disease, etc. because they're being put under stress to do something that they know deep down inside is not right. And so as you begin to see this in people, as you begin to watch people develop, one of the things that happens to people when they become more conscious, in other words, more aware of the relationship between the physical aspects of their reality and the spiritual aspects of their reality, they begin to see more and more and more that the way society is put together is wrong. And so they begin looking for some way, they begin what some people call truth searchers or just plain searchers, uh, philosophical searchers, whatever word phrase you like to use, they begin to say immediately one thing. There has to be something different than what I see around me. There has to be something better. And as you become more and more conscious, you begin to see that indeed, one, we're not alone. Two, there is some form of an advanced spiritual philosophy that deals with who and what we really are and see what people say we are in terms of physical beings and just being limited to that is wrong, that there has to be some kind of amalgam between the physical and the spiritual aspects of who and what we are. So you, you then begin searching around and, and, and looking for things. Now one of the things that they've allowed to leak out every so often over the millennia is a little bit of information. A lot of this information has been turned upside down and backwards because the Anunnaki do not want us to go beyond the initial concepts and really start to define one point after another and begin to put together what you might call a system of conceptualizing truthfully what this world is really about and that it really goes beyond the physical aspects. And so they have of course done a lot of stuff. You have a lot of myths, you have all kinds of books written in the modern world where literacy is more common. In the ancient days, there would be sacred texts that some people would be able to write, read or write, scribes, who could interpret this to the people, and they would get a little smattering in their minds of what is right or what is wrong, what is truly right or wrong. And so, this has always been there, but they've always kept it at the periphery because they don't want people to really grab it, but there's enough of it there that they can use that peripheral information to strengthen their concepts about what they believe and their manipulations of what is the true spiritual aspects is that combine with our physical aspects to create within us a real concept of reality. So what we then have going on is that for a long time we had the Anunnaki <coughs> at the top, we had the minions, what I like to call today the Dark Cabal, and they had us, which had different degrees of belief systems, different degrees of education, different degrees of understanding the world and its physical aspects and attempting to look beyond it. So we didn't really know if what we believed in was correct or not. A lot of people believed it so deeply, whatever they came up with, that they that whole different belief systems around our planet have been created. Many great leaders came from beyond, from spirit, to try to give human beings a better idea of the concepts of what is really the truth out there and go beyond the manipulations of the, of the minions, the dark cabal, and their leaders, the Anunnaki. Now, it all changed recently. In the mid-90s, so once again, I'm going to have to go backwards here and explain. In our galaxy, there's a light aspect and there's a dark aspect. The dark aspect, what I like to call the lords of the dark, are a collective. And this collective is can be basically called Inchara, which is a, a word that they came up with. By they, I mean the, the dark beings themselves, these lords of light. They call themselves the Anunnaki in the many different languages that, where they created what are called the, uh, the children of Anunnaki, of, of Inchara. The, the children of Inchara have, for long periods of time, been created without real light bodies, 
and totally in a lockstep belief of exactly whatever it is that these dark lords created. So they created war across the galaxy, etc. So now, Anchara had a, a pact with the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki and the, and the Ancharians, their various empires, were together. What happened was in 95, there was a, before the Dark Lords came into this galaxy, they created with the, with the light a basic reality of when and where all of this was going to change. When actually you would have this amalgam where the light and the dark came together and created a greater light. So, <clears throat> this has been going forward, this goes into millions of years, not just millennia. So as you look at the greater history, the galactic history, you see Anchara coming into this solar system. You see that being interpreted through, for Anchara, interpreted by the Anunnaki as far as planet Earth goes. And of course they needed their group, which were the various different minions, which became the various uh, ruling families, the various groups that were the most powerful beside the ruling families in any society, whether it was a city-state or later a nation. So what happened was, in 95, the light and the dark finally reached a point where they said it was time to end this dichotomy.